the organization, the amalgamation of these two aspects or the two facets, which is very rare and it is fortunately I have seen in this Karnataka Urdu Academy, which I have been associated for over five decades. This is the first time that the new impetus has been given, infusing the enthusiasm in all corners, bringing professionalism in all act, uh, actions. And the credit goes to no less than the secretary, sorry, registrar of this Urdu Academy, Dr. Khan Sahib. His lucid approach and the way in which he tackles the situation is remarkable. And he is fit to be a great leader in organizing and motivating many of the people. May I take this opportunity to thank you and compliment you, Mr. Hansa. Well, to just share my impressions as to what has happened since morning, I came as a chief evaluation officer. I had an interaction with many of the people around. Evaluators came from the different parts of the state and they did an excellent job. And one of the things which will have it when there was a competition and there was even some rate of a clarification, the way in which they approach the others and that have taken such a good decision. And I think so that also I need to compliment Dr. Firdos Sahaba. And more than all, the team of Dr. Khan Sahab deserves all the compliments for their wonderful work, which worked like a well oiled machine. And besides, not to just have anything of uh, exaggeration, the press people, the way in which they have taken the keen interest and they have taken the coverage of the minute aspects of the whole uh, actions and the whole of the activities which are taking place since morning is remarkable. May I compliment you all people, sir? Well, nevertheless, let me come back to the topic which you have been asked to speak just a couple of minutes ago. At the outset, let me compliment and congratulate all the winners of this competition. But immediately, let me hasten to add this is not the end, but the beginning. To Shaheen hai parwaz hai kaam tera. If you want to just read the whole thing, sitaron se aage jahan aur bhi hain, sitaron se aage jahan aur bhi hain, ishq ke imtihan aur bhi hain, to Shaheen hai parwaz hai kaam tera, tere saamne asma aur bhi hain. Well, I have been specifically, I have been mentioning for a simple reason, any of the achievement is only you have crossed only one milestone. You have not reached the destination. There are many things, challenges ahead. This is only to motivate you, to inspire you, to say, look, you are capable of doing many things and let you just, you have to go ahead with many more responsibilities that are coming in the future to you. This is exactly what is expected of a teacher. A teacher is one who has got the three roles, please understand, particularly for the teachers, because I had an occasion to go through randomly some of their inscriptions. Let me congratulate you. Well done. Well done. Good job. But the three profession, three professional, the, sorry, the three responsibilities which a teacher is having is one is the professional responsibility which every teacher is getting it because they are remunerated handsomely. Second is the moral duty. And third is the social obligation. The combination of three makes unique. And that's why you are called a teacher next to the parents. And no wonder more than 20 times in every prayers, particularly the Muslims, reminds of the teacher's contribution. Allahumma ali wali wali daya wali ustazia. Nobody will pray, forget my registrar, forget the vice chancellor. Nobody will say, but for the ustaz. Why I have been giving a very good reference, particularly for the teachers is there is it is said and, and rightly said, if there are two, if you want to destroy a country, if you want to destroy a country, I repeat this word, you need not bomb. You need not have a corporate bombing. You need not have atomic bombs. But only the thing is you corrupt two communities. One is the community of the teachers and second is the community of the doctors. The whole structure will collapse like a house of cards. 
And it is for that reason there is an additional responsibility that is given on the shoulders of the teachers to motivate and carry forward their activities and particularly for the language. A culture of the country is recognized through languages. Please understand this. Please underline this. And also we have to be very proud of it that the Urdu was born in India. Well, I have been associated with Urdu as uh, even uh, one of the predecessors was also talking about it, but more including in my own uh, family. Urdu, I had written an article about 45 years ago that Urdu was born in Karnataka. I have my own documents which I collected it. Urdu was born in Karnataka during Adil Shahi. And I usually used to tell, Paida hui Karnatak mein, Bachman guzra Hyderabad mein, phir uske baad jawani aai Bhopal mein, phir uske baad ladakpan aaya Delhi mein, jab nahi naveli dulhan bani, to Pakistani unne le ude usse. This is exactly what has happened to the world. And this is not, and please remember, there has been, I was saying that when some people were in the registrar's room, they were saying that Urdu is a language. I was saying that Urdu is not a language. I was saying that Urdu is not a language. I would like to say that Urdu is not a language. If there is a language, 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 वो उसका फना हो जाता, ज़बान फना हो जाती, ये ज़बान ये दिलों की पुकार है। The delicacy of thoughts, the delicacy of thoughts in Urdu is such a beautiful one that a fellow who also don't understand will also relate. And this is the fact and this is the reality. And such a great heritage we cannot afford to lose it from our country because our country is famous. The three hallmarks of our uh, uh, country is. One is the history, second is the harmony, and third is the heritage. We cannot afford to this. Heritage is our national asset and nobody should touch this. And rather we should be the guardians to safeguard this and particularly the heritage and more so the languages. So let me tell you if the people say that it is a Pakistani language, let me tell you this is not a Pakistani language. <coughs> Any language is spoken by the intellectuals will not survive for a long time. Unless and until it is spoken by a common man. In Pakistan, it is not the Urdu language which is spoken by a common man. It is only the intellectuals. It is only the intellectuals who speak uh, Urdu. The rest is either Sindhi or Pushto or the Punjabi. So that means to say if there is a possibility that Urdu can just uh, survive or it can just take a long leap in all its uh, fashion, it should be India. So nevertheless, but this... There are, could be always that happened to many of the languages, that happened to the Sanskrit, that happens to the Latin, that happens to the Greek. So we need not worry about these onslaughts that are going on in the Urdu language. What we have to make a determination is to see is how we have to promote this. And I was just going through one of the essays and let me compliment that candidate, but I don't remember the name because it was not written, that systematically she has given what should be the ways and means to just to promote Urdu. Urdu ke faroq dene ke liye kya kya ye aham ye masail ka hal kaisa nikal sakte hain. She has given a very chronological orders. That's a wonderful thing. That give me a lot of inspiration and rather a satisfaction that there is something which is still glowing in the hearts of each and every people to see that they want to safeguard the Urdu language. And please remember, I have been a strong opposer. I told this, I have written in Manasa Kirana way back in 1972. Perhaps you were not born. <laughs> born, yeah. I had written, is Urdu a Mahmudan's language? I used to give a, I gave a very critical, I was a MSc first year student at that time. I gave a chronology that Urdu is not a Muslim's language. Starting the Frak Gorok Piri, Akhushtar Grami and Indat Biswin Sadi, which we used to read with all the, this one, pomp and this one. It was the Ram Lal who used to write a beautiful uh, afsana. I hope you remember. Buddha Tota is one of the good uh, afsana that I had read long ago. But just 45 years ago, I read that. I still remember. I can still repeat the dialogues of that. So that means to say not to take much of our time, but we have the dignitaries on the dais who would like to just say because they also hold the power and they are the also people who are going to speak about the policies which the government of Karnataka in particular and government of India is in general, how they are going to take their policies 
to carry forward the Urdu, Urdu ki baha ke liye kya kya karna cha hai. I think so we have to listen. And for me, I can always be available. Anytime you can call me, I can just come and talk to you, discuss with you and how to go about. And it is in this context. Uh, it reminds me of some of the other couplets of Iqbal. I usually quote Iqbal because he is very near to me. It doesn't mean that I don't like uh, yeah, Ghalib. Ghalib also is very good. He is also very philosophical, but he look at his Ghalib. Without this, but still, Manzil se aage badkar manzil talash kar. Manzil se aage badkar manzil talash kar mil jaye tuch ko darya to samandar talash kar. Manzil se aage badkar manzil talash kar mil jaye tuch ko darya to samandar talash kar. I think so. I, uh, I need is chair pe mai pure naujawan tulba aur talibat ka mai tawajjo chahta hu. Har shisha toot jata hai. Har shisha toot jata hai patthar ki chhod se. Har shisha toot jata hai patthar ki chhod se. Patthar hi toot jaye wo shisha talash kar. And to be a little more philosophical at all, India is the land of all religions. Spirituality is our strength. Please do not forget spirituality is our strength and there has been an invasion on our culture. Let it be for any religion for that matter. We should safeguard it. So that's for that reason that we have to strengthen our spirituality and that is exactly Tere sajdon ko kya hua sadiyan guzar gai Tere sajdon ko kya hua sadiyan guzar gai Zindagi teri badal de wo sajda talash kar This is exactly what I mean but nevertheless, I have come all the way from Mysore. But still, I feel that I'm only 70 years young. There are a lot of things I have to do. <laughs> and so in this context, I'd like to quote Robert Frost. It's a lovely talk and deep, but I have promises to keep miles to go before I sleep, miles to go before I sleep. I conclude my speech with a word of thanks to uh, Dr. Khan Sahab, because it is already said in pa Surya Rahman al Jazawal Lesan Ila Lesan, he has come like an angel to me. He has been motivating me also, and he is trying to make me comfortable in all aspects. I'm, from the bottom of my heart, I thank him and all the members of the committee who have taken rather, I've been more pampered. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dr. Akhil Sahab, who was writing a book in the morning. Now, there was a seminar in the morning, and in the seminar, some of the members of the members have been able to share with us. They have been able to share with us. First of all, I would like to thank Mr. Muhammad Ubaidullah Sharif Sahab, who is the Chief Editor of the Chief Editor of the Urdu Kast. They have always given us the Urdu Kast. I would like to thank Mr. Muhammad Ubaidullah Sharif Sahab, and Mr. Muhammad Mohsin Sahab and Manoj Jain Sahab, تہنیت خبول فرمائے کرناٹک اردو اکیڈمی کی جانب سے جناب عبید اللہ شریف صاحب جنہوں نے ارزو مدارس میں طلبہ کے ترک تعلیم میں نے ڈراپ آؤٹ کے رجحان پر کس طرح خبو پایا جا سکتا ہے اس پر انہوں نے ہمیں اپنے خیالہ سے روبرو کیا جناب محمد عبید اللہ شریف صاحب حضرین میں آپ کو بتا دوں کہ دائس پر جو ہمارے ساتھ ایک وظیفہ آیا وہ افسر ایم خالی صاحب ہیں انہوں نے ہی یہ انوان ہمیں سجسٹ کیا تھا ایک بار ان کے لئے بھی ہم بہت شکر گزار ہیں جرا مبین منور صاحب سابق چیئرمن کرناٹا کردو اکیڈیمی آپ نے ہندوستان میں اردو کا فروغ اس موضوع پر ہمیں اپنے خیالات سے روشناس کروایا میں گزارش کرتا ہوں کہ وہ تشریف لائیں اور شائری میں ناتیہ کلام کے حوالے سے بھی آپ ایک مختدر نام ہیں جرا مبین منور صاحب آپ کی خدمت میں جناب محمد محسن صاحب اور جناب منوز جیل صاحب آپ کی خدمت میں تہنیت پیش کر رہے ہیں علامہ اقبال کا ترانائے ہندی سارے جہاں سے اچھا ہندوستہ ہمارا اس ترانائے ہند کا تاریخی پہلو اور اس کی اہمیت و افادیت سے ہمیں روشناس کروایا جناب منیر احمد جامی صاحب جو ریاست کے مقبول شائر ہیں میں بسط احترام گزارش کرتا ہوں کہ تشریف لائیں اور انہوں نے صبح کے جو تقریب رہی 
سیمینار کی اس کی کامیاب نظامت بھی کی ہے جناب منیر احمد جامی صاحب جو کرناٹک میں تقدیسی عدب کے حوالے سے ایک معتبر نام ہے میں گزارش کرتا ہوں جناب محمد محسن صاحب اور منوز جین صاحب سے کہ آپ کی خدمت میں تحنیت پیش کریں جناب منیر احمد جامی کے لیے اردو سے ہماری محبت کیسی ہو اس موضوع پر ہمیں خطاب فرمایا نوجوان صحافی جناب ابراہیم نفیس نے جو اونچی آواز اپنی یوٹیوب چینل اور اخبار کے حوالے سے انہوں نے ہمیشہ اردو والوں میں ایک نیا جوش بھرنے کی کامیاب کوشش کی ہے جناب انیس ابراہیم ابراہیم نفیس صاحب جنہوں نے اردو سے ہماری محبت کیسی ہو اس عنوان پر ہمیں خطاب فرمایا آپ کی خدمت میں تہنیت جناب محمد محسن صاحب اور منوز جین صاحب پیش کر رہے ہیں جناب ابراہیم نفیس نوجوان و برتہ و صحافی روزنامہ سالار کے سابق مدیر جناب کے افتخار احمد شریف صاحب اردو زبان کے فروغ کے لیے کس طرح کے اقدامات درکار ہیں اس موضوع پر انہوں نے ہمیں بالکل فکر انگیز امور سے روشناس کروایا جناب کے افتخار احمد شریف کی قدمت میں جناب منوز جین صاحب اور محسن صاحب آپ کی قہمیت آپ کی خدمت میں پیش کر رہے ہیں اور آخر میں اس کڑی میں میں نے ناظرین بولنے کا فن بھی اللہ تعالیٰ بعض و بعضوں کو دیتا ہے ریاست کی تاریخ میں اگر ناظمین کا سلسلہ چلے تو ایک اپھرتا ہوا نام سر فہرس جو نام آتا ہے وہ محترم آزم شاہد کا ہے جو صبح میں بہترین مقالے کی شکل میں اپنے احساسات کا اظہار کیا اب ان کا بھی احساس کیا جا رہا ہے 